1.5 billion and a growth rate of 22%. The fifth largest in the world and it's continued to grow. This is the China market that we we're talking about. So today, as the saying goes, if you can't beat them, join them. And what we'll be showing you as a team today is that we'll be able to join the Chinese market and make it extremely profitable for our company, Fitzum. Now firstly, I will be analyzing the situation. I'll be, I'll be answering the question as to what went wrong in China and whether China is a lucrative market for us. Secondly, I'll be analyzing the key issues, which is firstly, that of our Viagra patent expiring in 2014 and how exactly to maximize this value. Secondly, I'll be looking at IPR issues for the future because we see China as a very lucrative market for our company. Thirdly, I'll be, uh, we'll be looking at a strategy, firstly that of maximize and secondly that of satisfy. Now we will be looking at our strategy in a couple of moments. Because the time is very tight for us, we only have four years. But at the same time, we do not want to compromise our long-term growth. Let us remember that Fitza is not a one product company. It has many other products and therefore we have to consider the future growth of the company. As such, we need to deal with this pressing issue of poor sales and also we need to, um, we need to maximize the remaining value of Viagra. As we all know now, um, 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 they, they have several um, huge competitors in China and therefore the issue is, is it worth to invest in this one drug continually? And our answer to that is no. The main reasons why we failed to succeed initially was because we neglected the unique needs of these three major groups. Firstly, we're looking at the need of the government, secondly, consumers, and lastly, media. In a relatively young and immature legal uh, regulatory body in China, we foresee that there is going to be very, very much turbulence as this system is still struggling to keep up to pace with international standards. And as such, we foresee that a close understanding and a close relationship with the government will be paramount in our execution of a sustainable growth development strategy. And secondly, the consumers. There are two major important things in any pharmaceutical company. Firstly, the marketability of its drugs. If a drug is ineffective, if the consumers do not want it, then of course it's not going to sell. And secondly, sustainability, which is very much dependent on IPR, intellectual property rights protection. Now we look at the financial feasibility of our strategies. Firstly, we look at the budget, the cost we need to sustain this strategy. In our maximized strategy, we are looking at collaboration expenses with the partner, as well as basically solving legal and production issues, marketing expenses on the maximized side. On the satisfied side, we are looking at CSR initiatives, as mentioned by my colleague Tobias, hiring a, PS, a PR consultancy and marketing expenses, as well as verification from the doctors we need in order to sustain our image in the eyes of the consumers. In total, the budget will cost approximately $24 million for a maturing product. So how would you expect us to reach 20% share in 2010? And what's the rationale that would increase to 40% when historically China um, foreign companies can only capture a maximum 20% share of the market? Looking here, it's not just Pfizer alone. We are working with an example of a partner, is, in this case, Guangzhou Environment, which controls approximately 10 to 15% in 2004 itself. So in a combination, we can look at 2010, 20% is indeed not a very far figure from what the two companies originally have in the market. By combining the synergies of these two companies, Guangzhou Environment with their excellent brand, as well as the trademark they hold of Waker, in addition with our R&D capabilities, as well as the fact that we hold a patent to Viagra itself, we hope to capture 40% of market share by 2014. What, what drives you to think that if you set the price at that particular range, it will drive um, sales upwards? Um, I think we came to that price um, given a few considerations. Now the first thing is definitely we have to note the fact that we are Pfizer and that we cannot go below a certain standard because of what our consumers expect of us and it's consistent with our global brand image. And secondly, our tie-ups with doctors to actually um, promote the products. We believe that with this promotion comes legitimacy which will allow us to command a slightly higher premium than what is being sold in the market. May I add on? Um, one thing is that for currently for Waker, which is under Guangzhou Environment, uh, we are looking at 5 to 6 US dollars as well. And the differentiating point is that they are uh, an over the, uh, over-the-counter brand, but on the other hand, we are a pharmaceutical brand. That means that our potency is a little bit higher, and therefore, for this premium, we actually can compete very well against this uh, Waker company. 1998 was an exciting year for men on planet Earth. It was because Viagra, a new and the first in the kind erectile dysfunction treatment drug 
was first launched by Pfizer, one of the world's pre-known drug manufacturing company. In fact, the entire global community was so excited about this project that the Chinese media has been starting to report on these Rigor drug even before the official launch of the drug in China. And they've actually been giving names to this drug, actually calling them Wei Ge, which also stands for the Great Elder Brother. Now this excitement didn't actually help uh, Pfizer in launching its Viagra product that much. As the poor sales of Viagra, this was caused mainly due to the confusion of the Chinese consumers. They don't know which brand or product they should buy. Secondly, there's a lot of counterfeits in the market. So consumers don't actually know which is the real product and which one they should really buy on. And this has caused to only a $12 million in sales in 2004. In the China market, there are, we can identify both foreign and local players. Well, in the foreign sectors, besides uh, Pfizer, there are also Bears and Elililis. And well, for the locals, there are many to name. For instance, the, the Guangzhou, Vietnam, that has already taken uh, the uh, not settling with the trademark with us, as well as Lijo Pharmaceutical Companies, and a lot, a lot, a lot to name. However, none of these are, uh, are actually the dominant player. The dominant player actually goes to the counterfeiters. They are actually the winners in the whole competitive market. They account for 70 to almost 80% of the whole sales. As you can see, the total market size by, uh, in China by population is 97.3 million, while by a US dollar in amounts, the sales actually goes up to 263.5 million, and that's a lot. That's a lot to gain, but for such a big company, Fighter, it's actually obtained only 4.6%, and that's not a good sign. Another part of our short-term recommendation is about the company, the Pfizer, uh, Pfizer company. Yeah, um, an important part of the unsatisfactory about the company in China market is the lack of local knowledge. So to tackle that problem, an important and a best way is to form the joint venture with a local company. Uh, Pfizer has gone through a lot of legal disputes with uh, women in the past. However, both of them are loading space to the counterfeits um, in the market. So who says that enemies in the past can't join hands currently? We think this joint venture will bring a benefit to uh, both of the parties. We think that it's necessary for us to set up a specialized IP department in China. Because concerning China, well, for Pfizer's entry strategy, what's the biggest problem? Is that it's too slow. It's too slow in registering its trademark, Wei Ge, and so Guangdong gets the advantage. So we propose that by setting up the IP department and to hire in-house lawyers as well as local specialties and expertise, we can actually resolve this problem because local expertise will be more aware of the latest development in Chinese medical field and those in-house lawyers will assist us to register patents and trademark as soon as possible. You mentioned joint venture as a key part of your strategy. Um, what are the challenges going to be by setting up the joint venture? Well, concerning the challenges of setting up JVs, of course, one of the challenges would be the willingness of our partner to join us in this joint venture, as well as some cultural issues in merging two different companies with Western and Chinese culture. But we believe that this can be solved through a managerial process, as well as other kinds of measures and developments. And it, is, it can also be seen that the market of the Chinese and Western fusion medicine is actually growing. And so this also provides incentive for both companies to enter into this joint venture. And so the challenge is actually not that huge as foreseen. Did you consider any other alternatives aside from JVs um, in terms of dealing with uh, local companies in China? For example, M&A or licensing or you know, just going it organically. What are the pros and cons of JV? Um, and we think about GV because we, it remembers us of a successful example in India. When Ila Lili tried to enter the Indian market, the um, firm joint venture with a local company to go through all the legal issues and the uh, distribution channels, and they separate after a few years because Ila Lili already got the, uh, what they want and they have built a presence in the Indian market. So we think, if you think about that example, we think joint venture may be a good consideration. Just to supplement on that a little bit, is that the nature of joint venture allows us to start a fresh a new company and that means that we don't have to be bounded by the current management within Vimon for example. We can form a new joint venture company by 50-50% shareholding which means that two companies can synergize their management into manage the new company which are out of restrictions and we think that this you know restriction free environment is very important in the pharmaceutical company when you talk about a lot of innovation, when you're talking about a lot of new ideas. So joint venture in this case we think that is most suitable in terms of the nature of the industry itself.